Happy Thumbs Gaming. We shall. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming and today we have yet another Uncharted 4 A Thief's In video. This one happens to be for Chapter 9, Those Who Prove Worthy. We are going to get a bonus trophy called Trials and Tribulations, which actually requires us to solve the puzzle in this area in uh, a certain amount of moves or less. And we got you covered on that, so don't worry. Uh, we're also going to get six treasures. We're going to find one optional conversation, one journal note, two journal entries, and of course, two weapons. Now, one of the journal entries is almost unmissable. It's right at the very beginning of this chapter, and you just walk right up to this uh, little cage with a skeleton in it, and uh, well, hopefully you don't have as hard of a time as I did trying to access it, but once you do, you can see you pick up a journal entry. We're gonna go ahead and tap the old touchpad to go ahead and check out, see what we draw on. You know, I gotta give it up. Drake's not only awesome, smart, but he's a good artist too. Gotta give him that. And all right, so we're going to keep on keeping on. Now, there's a rickety bridge down below. And before crossing it, you want to drop down to this left edge on the left side and uh, grab a piece of treasure, which we'll go ahead and find right now. It's easy to miss. And if you cross that bridge, you will not be able to go back. So you'll have to start the level over again. Uh, and again, I'm not sure if you can use the encounter to do this and pick up the treasure or if you actually have to play the chapter itself. Now, you can see we picked up some sort of a, I don't know what that was, a Macintosh or something. It was a weird looking pistola or something. Anyhow, we uh, jump across the bridge and watch out below. It's certainly a sketchy little uh, bridge as we go across. Look at that ice. There's glaciers hanging down from the ceiling and stuff too. This is a pretty sketch tunnel, but uh, I like it. It's a lot of fun, and hey, uh, go ahead and feel free to use the quick links down below to quickly access the next collectibles. If you're here just for the collectibles, that'll help you get through this level. Uh, and, and of course, you know we could have edited all this stuff out and just done just the collectibles, but we figured uh, having this extra uh, part of the level really helps get through it. Now we have removed the cutscenes, and there's a fight scene or two that we've kind of shortened down. But uh, other than that, we've got most of this chapter available for your viewing pleasure. So all right, so here we go. We walk into this room. And right as Nate steps on that plank there, it actually seals the room off and uh, the Trials and Tribulation trophy has begun. So we've got this big puzzle with this wheel. It's actually a one giant wheel that has four separate wheels. We're going to go ahead and start it off by walking over to the left-hand side. Now, I know it's a little scary. There's a bunch of spikes and a dead body there, which uh, don't mind that, right? But uh, we're actually going to have to go ahead and access this so that uh, it can kind of reset the puzzle, so to speak. As you can see, all of the spikes retract. They have a couple of words, and oh, look at that. All of a sudden, it spins around, and it kicks down with a bucket. That's right, bust a bucket, bust, bust a bucket. Only Portland Trailblazer fans will uh, <laughs> will feel me on that one. Anyhow, Google it. If you don't know what Bust a Bucket is, Google Bust a Bucket Portland Trailblazers and uh, enjoy. Anyhow, we're going to grab that bucket and we're going to bust down into the water. And look at that. All of a sudden, this new icon pops up, allowing us to fill the bucket. So we filled that. Now we're going to turn around and hand it up to Sam because it's quite a long jump up to the top here. And uh, all right, so we've got that up to him. Now we can go ahead and just scale this wall by pressing up and jump. And look at that, we're up and ready to go. As soon as Sam puts that water bucket, water filled bucket, it actually lights up and shows us three spots, kind of spotlit there. And oh, look at this, it gives us a little hint to check out the journal. Now, essentially what this is doing is giving us a hint to what we need to do and the order of how we need to do it. So it's telling us which of the crosses is which and which place they need to be. And you can see there are three there, but here, we're gonna do you one better, ready? We're going to start off by turning crank one clockwise one time. Then we're going to head on over to crank number three and turn it clockwise one time. Now go back to crank one and turn it clockwise two times, which moves the bucket up into the top spot there, which is uh, close to what we need. So next go to clock or crank number three and clockwise one more time. Then we're going to head over to crank number two, which we haven't visited yet, and we're going to move it one time, which moves the bucket into the top slot and slides the black cross into the bottom disc. Last but not least, turn the crank three, turn crank three clockwise one last time, and look at that. 
That's right. We got them all in place there. And uh, in order to go ahead and ring off the trophy and complete the puzzle, you do have to head back over and <laughs> place your hand inside there. Now, if you don't have it right, I don't know what happens. I did not do it incorrectly, but I can't imagine it's a good thing. But we spam that button. Spam, 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 spam. And all of a sudden, you hear all the things clank and clunk and boom. And look at this. The bucket tips over and spills the water. The water makes its way down the little pathways there, and it heads on over to the door and opens the door. Look at that. Booyaka Shao. Yeah, there we go. I was a little early on the Booyaka Shao, but look at that. Trials and Tribulations trophy is now ours. But before leaving the room, make sure that you walk up to the end here, the little puzzle hole there, and make sure you grab the optional journal entry there, which happens to be the second one and completes the journal entries for this. Now, next up is an optional conversation. As soon as you leave this room, you want to let Sam catch up with you and then follow him. He's actually going to walk up to this cliff on the upper left-hand side over here, and uh, the little icon's going to pop up above his head, and we're going to walk up and press triangle to go ahead and activate this, and he says something like, uh, as I live and breathe, or something like that, and... Uh, we're going to go ahead and listen to the rest of that statement and uh, make sure you hang out and wait long enough for him to complete this. The conversation might not count if you walk away before they're done talking. Now, moving along, there actually is a pretty well-hidden treasure coming up here. As you can see, I walk right up to this right ledge and there is a, a wood barrier or some sort of beam down there that we can go ahead and jump off the ledge and use our grapple to get up to. Now this gets a little weird, I gotta be honest, it was kind of a funny angle, but uh, if you spin out and kind of look off behind you or maybe to your right or left, I guess it just depends on which way you uh, jumped and spun around, there is a lower ledge down here and there's a skeleton with a treasure on it and wait, wait, what's this? Hey, that's a familiar, that's a familiar logo. Now, I gotta be honest, I don't really remember the name, Drucky, but the, hey, that that is a Firefly logo from The Last of Us. So that's pretty sweet, a little uh, reference there. And I know that we have heard some rumors that Naughty Dog is in progress making some sort of sequel to The Last of Us. Now, I don't know if that's officially been confirmed yet. I haven't seen anything that, like, straight from the dog's mouth. Naughty Dog, that is. Uh, and, and But we'll find out hopefully sooner or later. E3 is coming up, uh, not to time date this video or anything, but uh, lots of announcements coming out. In fact, they just announced LEGO Dimensions way, or Year 2 Wave 1 content, as well as the other franchise expected in Year 2. So totally off topic from Uncharted, but awesome nonetheless. All right, so hey, here's the next treasure. Once we get to this grapple point, we have to grapple into these giant arches. They kind of look like the underside of a bridge. We're going to drop down on the ground and head off to the left-hand side, and there's a cliff here that actually has a bunch of handheld spots you can drop down to, and all the way down in the bottom right of the bottom handheld is a treasure. Look at that. So we're halfway done with the treasures. This one happens to be uh, an amatory box. Am I saying that right? Am 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 amatory? Am am amatory? I don't know. I slaughter all sorts of words, names, and things. It ain't nothing new for me <laughs> if you've watched any of our videos, especially Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit stuff. Woo-wee! That Tolkienology is a little bit uh, different. It's, uh, you know, not what, you, not what you'd expect most of the time. All right, moving along here. We do have a minute or two before the next collectible, so if you are here looking for those, uh, what is it, treasure number four, Quick Link would be the next one to take you away. Otherwise, we're going to jump up on this ledge, and there's a little triangle icon that pops up that allows us to lift Sam up above to that broken ladder. He's going to go ahead and make his way over and press, push, not press, and I guess he could have been bench pressing that box off the ledge there. But uh, it actually has some casters on the bottom that will allow us to roll it around. And luckily for us, there is a little cliff's edge over here on the left-hand side. So we'll go ahead and jump up there and make our way around. Now, I'll be honest, here in a minute we make our way all the way up and around up to that bridge that's broken on the right side of your screen there. And I, I made a huge mistake and jumped down, and I had to do all of this section again. So I had to move that crate over, I had to climb up and over, and I had to do all this. And I did edit it out. I didn't want to make you guys watch it, but uh, I'll notate that when we get there. Now, this is a little tricky. You have to make your way, you're supposed to be following Sam, and you got to make your way all the way over to the left. And, and this little corner here, you got to go up, and there's some scratch marks on the wall that kind of indicate, you know, somebody's been grabbing onto the wall. So that uh, that's how we figured that one out. And uh, we're making our way all the way over and down. And look at that, we've got this nice little crevasse we're going to climb into. God, I am so claustrophobic. I am so glad this is not me in real life, or RL, as we like to say. Just because, man, I, look, I mean, look at this. At any point, any of this stuff could come tumbling down. How many, how many, you know, feet 
of debris, rocks, and stuff is above us right now. I mean, I have no idea how far underground we really are. But uh, I don't really want to think about it. If I'm being honest, I'm getting claustrophobic just thinking about this. I, I would not be a good Tomb Raider. Not not in any shape of the way or form or word. So, oh, this is pretty cool, too. Look, if you're confused on where to go, Sam actually shines his flashlight over here. He doesn't really say anything, but he kind of gives us a nice little cue. And I, I bet, you know, the game's pretty smart of adapting to the player. So if you do get lost or behind in a puzzle, the game's pretty smart about, like, finding ways to help you get there. Now, speaking of finding ways to get there, as we're climbing our way up and around, we notice that there's, oh, a little crevasse that we can hear some people talking. And it turns out we can spy on Nadine and Rafa. And uh, we go ahead and we do that. We edited that long cutscene out. It was like a four minute cutscene. And uh, we're going to keep on keeping on and making our way all the way over to the right hand side. Now, follow the left hand wall. And uh, we're going to make our way into this little treasure room here. You can see there's a statue knocked down. We'll go ahead and use the circle button to barrel roll under that. And once we get by the statue, we find a piece of treasure on the back wall here. So, woohoo! Ooh, and a stake too. Pew. It's a pewter box. Pew, pew, pew. I don't know if that's sh like shooting lasers inside or if that's like a stinky pew. Or <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Sorry. All right. So uh, you might have noticed a little bit of a jump there. I totally died. And I, I thought I had to jump down to that ledge down there. But it turns out you have to rappel down your rope until you cannot rappel anymore. And then look around and you'll see another hole in the wall. And you can actually swing over through that hole and onto this cliff's edge. And now we have a whole new area that we can jump up and climb around on. So... Ooh, look at that, another hole. And this time we find another crate, and uh, we're going to push this one off the ledge. It took me a second. I was like, God, do I use it to climb up higher, or what do I do here? But it turns out we actually push it down. Luckily for us, it's well built. You know, they don't make boxes like that anymore. They don't build them like they used to. I know if we were to toss that off the edge from uh, that height, it would have crumbled into pieces. But all right, uh, Sam's not helping us out any by standing in our way here, and I didn't do myself any good by uh, having it 80 feet away from the wall and trying to make the long jump there. But uh, essentially, you need to push this all the way up to the wall and then scale this wall by climbing up on it. woo -hoo! Did a little celebratory hop there. Actually, I was trying to hop up from the side and wouldn't let me for whatever reason. But hey, look at that. The Treasure 5 annotation is there now. And we're going to go ahead and instead of following the story straight ahead like it anticipated us to do, we're going to take a right and drop down to this lower edge. Now, you don't have to go through that first little corridor. You can actually go up and around. You can go up and around. But, but the point is you want to go off to the far right side. And I'm a little lost. My notes told me to drop down off the edge of the cliff here on the right side. But I'm not seeing any handhelds or anything to jump down to. Oh, but there it is behind me. So I see it, and I run, and I jump. And this is that bridge that actually drops down below. Remember I was telling you a minute ago that I actually jumped down, and I had to do all that climbing all over again? Well, you're about to see the edit. As soon as I pick up the treasure and look at it, you'll see a little bit of an edit because I went back, and I started from right here to kind of smooth it out because uh, I climbed up and jumped off instead of going up and around like we'll do here in a second. But there you go. There was the little jittery spot there. Uh, okay, though, we are up, up, and away. Let's climb up and go through the little archway and over to our left now. And now we're actually advancing through the level. Now the final treasure is actually right across this little canyon or ravine or drop off, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and throw your grapple out and then make the jump and rappel up to the top Boy, that top looks really weird. That I didn't really spend much time looking up at the ceiling, but boy, that's pretty sketchy. But uh, we're going to go all the way to the right-hand side and jump over the boxes and in the corner on the counter behind the wicker basket is this weird, I don't even know what that is. It's a Scottish tip staff. I still don't know what that is. I, I got a name for it, but I couldn't tell you what it is or what it's for, but... Uh, all right, so as far as the collectibles go, that's going to do it for collectibles. Now, we do have weapons. If you're looking for the I accidentally all the weapons trophy, there are two weapons that will be found later. One is actually the turret, and the other one is a long-range rifle. It's called, like, the mole, mole, not mole rat. What is it called? It's the, uh, uh, the mazur, the ma, ma, mazur, mazur, something like that. But uh, all right, so we actually have moved that box. We used our grapple one more time to rappel down and do a nice little wall ride. And we swung all the way over. And now we got to wait for Sam. And Sam's going to go ahead and look ahead and be like, uh, something's going on up there with that crevasse. And at that point, we're going to turn around and we're going to try to make our way down. But that's not it. 
We're actually going to go up, and I think there's a little left turn up here at the end of the hallway. Yep, yep, sure enough, there sure is. All right, upsie daisy, go on, man. Upsie drakesy. There we go. That that's better. Upsie daisy doesn't quite work. Upsie drakesy, though, right? Right? <laughs> All right, make your way through this little uh, crevasse again. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves with the, probably the world's largest teeter-totter, but not quite yet. We're actually going to drop down to this level below us, but uh, the safe passage is on the right-hand side over there. You can see there's a little ledge you can jump to, and then you can drop, drop, drop down. And uh, don't forget to uh, pay attention to the skeleton down here. The one and only journal note for this chapter is actually right here on his body. So pick it up. Hopefully you brought some hand sanitizer when you're done. Oh, luckily for us, it was in a little leather pouch. I don't know. I still wouldn't trust it, though. But you can see there's a little bit of information going on there. You can put your hand through the wall, and it looks like it's petting the lion. That kind of looks like a glory hole in early ancient... Look, at, doesn't it? I mean, over, oh my goodness, that's terrible. Naughty dog, you so naughty. But uh, all right, so we have this plank we have to scale and get across. And uh, once we get up and over there, we have a couple of uh, ledges to jump to. And remember I told you there is the world's largest teeter-totter. Well, we have officially found it. And uh, hey, if you guys are here just for the weapons, is that's all you're here for, go ahead and click the weapon one or weapon two link down below. And uh, that'll take you to the important stuff. Otherwise, we're going to play Seesaw back and forth here. But we gotta actually have to uh, wait and allow Sam to jump on. So I was kind of standing there waiting for him. Like, come on, Sam. Weigh this down. Push me up. But you actually have to go quite a bit of a ways back in order to allow safe passage for him to jump out. But once he's on there, you can actually run all the way out and jump off to the little rock ledge on the right-hand side. And eventually, we get to a little twirly pole here. And uh, we're going to use our grapple to go ahead and rappel out and over to the wall. And, of course, we have to be quick and nimble here on this little, uh, I don't know what that is, some sort of water wheel or something. And look at this. We have now officially found a counterweight to weigh down this, the teeter-totter out there. And uh, this will allow safe passage for both of us to get up and around here. Because, essentially, we're trying to get up and over to the left side over there. But, uh, yeah, so... Luckily for us, there is a nice little passage, and uh, woohoo! Look at that, we launched him up. And this does weigh more than us, so we can actually drop down and run up and over. We do not need anybody else there. It's kind of a sketchy drop, and uh, whoa, whoa, run, run, run! Make the jump, and look at that, woohoo! Thank you, Sam. And all right, so again, we do have quite a long ways before we get to any, uh, any other of the collectibles, including a long fight scene. We've actually removed most of the battle, but there is a little bit of a hallway, kind of a, uh, you'll see, you'll see. We kind of go all the way through here and find ourselves fighting a series of bad guys. And I actually even died a time or two on this. I hate to admit that, but I did. I was just trying to hide and take cover, and sometimes I'm like, all right, I just hide, take cover, and somehow I still get shot, but... Eventually, we make our way all the way down this long stairwell, and we find another one of those sketchy doors and another glory hole. But we actually find ourselves in a cutscene listening to Nadine and uh, Rafe. And uh, as it turns out, we find ourselves in the midst of some gunfire as soon as it returns from that cutscene. And oh no, we fall! Oh, but not to our doom. Not just yet, anyways. We find this center column out in the middle, jump to it. And we scale it and go up and around. This is craziness right here. People are shooting at us. Things are falling from the ceiling. And uh, look at this. It's like spinning around, too. It's like a giant Jenga tower about ready to topple over. And oh, no, I fell off. That doesn't help. <laughs> and you got to make the jump from up top, not from the side. And speaking of the side, make your way all the way up to the top. And look at this. ka -chow! Gave him the old one-two pow right in the kisser. And now we've got this hallway, and I think this is getting pretty close to the area of where I died. Uh, stuff comes tumbling down, blocking some pathways off to the right. However, I did see a bunch of, like, you know, little indicators that there is ammo or weapons. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss an opportunity at one of the weapons coming up. Because I know there's some coming up, but it could have been at any point. You never know. Uh, but eventually we get up here. We're probably another minute and a half or so, maybe two minutes out from uh, the next weapon. But this is a pretty intense scene, you know. Again, got to give it up to Naughty Dog and the writers. Um, you know, all these action scenes don't happen on their own. You know, somebody actually has to think of all this stuff. So props to them. And uh, again, to, you know, we've got great voice acting. And, uh, I mean, even the character animations have been well done. And I'm assuming there's been plenty of uh, screen capture, motion capture things that have uh, created all this. That they're not just uh, written scripts that are providing the, the animations. 
But, uh, all right, lots of bad guys down. We find ourselves at the top of the hill, and there's a nice little cave going back to the left. Lots of uh, para 45 ammo on the ground. But uh, as we make our way to this hallway, oh, no, more bad guys. Turns out there is an explody barrel. Go ahead and grab that. There should be a box or two along the way here where you can find, uh, <laughs> did you like that, some dynamite. Uh, no, there wasn't an edit there. I, I didn't die and, and, and make it. Actually, the guy with the shotgun got me in the first round. And speaking of box of dynamite, there she blows. And uh, I went ahead and wasted the only stick that I grabbed from right there. There's another box further up the way, but uh, I do get a kill. But that was kind of funny. I, I When I originally edited this, I thought I did a pretty good job of, like, capturing the moment with the camera. Like, he's looking down this hallway or, or this cave or whatever. And I got, like, I matched that up pretty good. But what I failed to realize was that I'd already exploded the barrel in the first scene, and I had not yet exploded the barrel in the second scene. So, anyways. Speaking of which, jeez, just when you think the battle is over and you've taken all these guys out, I mean, how many guys have we killed already? At least, at least a dozen since we scaled that crazy Jenga rock out in the middle there. And here we are. We find ourselves with a whole bunch more. And look at this. I almost blew Sam's mind. <laughs> well... And the rest of them up too. But, uh, all right, so we found ourselves an AK. We ditched the shotgun, which uh, was handy for a minute, but now we need some more long range kind of action here. And uh, there's another explodey barrel in the back. And uh, disregard my terrible aim here. And I'm serious when I say that. Don't, don't pay attention to that. But what we will pay attention to is that uh, I believe we are getting close. Yes, we are. We are getting close to the next section where we find ourselves running up to a giant turret. Now, there is a whole nother section of bad guys coming up. We have to go up and around this little cliff here. And uh, and then we go back inside. And once we get down and inside here, that's where the turret is. So the turret's actually down below us to our left now. Not to make you dizzy as I spin around. But uh, here we go. And there it is. It's up on that little uh, scaffolding there. And it does work, too. So watch out. If you're behind any kind of wooden stuff, it'll, it'll eat it up. But as you can see, we edited out all of that nonsense. There was probably another 10, 12 guys there. But uh, most importantly, make sure you run up and fire off a few rounds. If you can get to it while fighting off the bad guys, hey, that's good. Because they each time you take a guy off it, the next guy runs up and tries to take over it. So we had to take out, like, five guys shooting from that turret. So if you can get to it and take out the bad guys with it, that'll help. But you do not need to get a kill with the turret. You simply just need to fire off some rounds to count towards that I accidentally all the guns trophy. Now, speaking of which, the next one is actually right here as well. There's a sniper that I killed over on the left-hand side, and he has dropped the next gun, which is what? The Mazur or the Ma Mazur or something like that. And there's actually one on a crate sitting right there too. So simply grab that and fire off a round and then complete the level. Whether you use it to kill people or not, it doesn't matter. To get that trophy, you simply just need to fire off a round, which I've done. Oops. Once, up, oh, twice, up, oh, third time's a, fourth time's a charm, something like that. We'll end it on that, because my aim's not so good. But, uh, hey, that's going to wrap it up for Uncharted 4 Chapter 9, Those Who Prove Worthy, where we got all the collectibles and uh, hopefully had some fun along the way. Now, if you guys have any questions or requests, um, you know, maybe you want a specific video that's a little shorter just for the trophy that was uh, available on this level, Trials and Tribulations, or maybe you want a Ghost in the Cemetery one from the last level, whatever it is, drop over to any of our social pages, like Facebook, Twitter, or comment, vote, subscribe down below. Of course, Happy Thumbs Gaming com is available for your viewing pleasure too and uh yeah we've got all sorts of fun stuff coming up uh, like i said lots of lego stuff in our near future we're gonna go ahead and try our best to finish up this uncharted series i know not very many of you are watching it but we appreciate those of you who are and uh that being said that's gonna wrap it up for me as always until next time My aim, not so good. So yeah.